All right, it's my joy and privilege, uh, thank you, to, uh, to introduce this morning's speaker. Carol Houston is a member of our Board of Trustees. I've known Carol since 2007 when Pam and I and our family arrived as, as your presidential family. I have loved knowing Carol. Uh, she's one of the most spiritually centered people. She sees into situations, sees both their physical and emotional reality, but she sees the deeper motives at play, where our spirit really seeks the spirit of God or turns away from the spirit of God. She has been both a music executive, has run her family's business, and she is now a minister of her own church. In 1993, she formed Unspeakable Joy Christian Fellowship, which later merged with Bethel United Holy Church. She serves in this congregation as its senior pastor and teacher. She's been a board member here since 1997. And one of the most remarkable things about Carol is she is a bridge builder. She doesn't look for ways to take offense. She looks for ways in which she can encourage people to mend wounds, to heal deep clevages, and look for ways in which we can come together to build communities that honor God and further her, his purposes. Carol, thank you for being here. It's wonderful to welcome you back to Westmont. Good morning, Westmont. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to be here to worship with you on today. And I wanted to start by telling you of an experience I had in January when I was on campus was early in the morning and I was walking up from Van Camp and up to the Kerr Student Center. Westmont students, you have a picture of that? What that looks like, that little path I was walking up. And as I was walking, I saw a Westmont student. And when I looked at the student, I said, good morning. And the Westmont student did not speak to me. <laughs> now, now that, that was real, thank you. That, that was really different for me. I, I, I was walking up, you get the picture, I was walking up from Van Campen. And so when that happened, it was a nice opportunity for me to stop to catch my breath from that ascent. But as I stopped, I, I, I looked at the student because the student was walking down towards uh, what looked to be the Global Learning Center. And in that moment of taking my breath and I, I looked at the student as the student passed and I was in awe of what I discerned. I was saddened as I paused and I, I looked at the student as that student passed because as I really began to look and see, I felt deeply what that person seemingly was experiencing. The student looked very sad, solemn. The student's head was down and seemingly in despair, a sense of hopelessness. And in those moments of, of, of pausing, I, I looked and I, I, I realized, wow, I've been there. And it gripped my heart. And Westmont community, I tell you this this morning, from that moment to this very moment I stand before you today, I've been in prayer not only for that student, but in prayer for me and in prayer for all of us in this Westmont community. It's a reflection of, of, of what our lives can be like from time to time. And as I continued my walk up the path, I, I, I embraced a, a portion of scripture that is very familiar to me. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, where it says, trust in the Lord 
with all your heart. And don't lean to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge the Lord and he shall direct your path. As I continued up to Kerr Student Center, I got excited on the inside based on my current experience and that's what I want to share with you on today. And that is a fact that we're in motion. I'm in motion, we're in motion. Students, you're in motion. Doing your best during this time of midterms and your goals that are being set for how you will complete this year of study. It's not only you students, but those of us who are trustees, part of the executive team, faculty, and staff. Life has a lot of different paths and roads. And when I looked at this student, I began to pray for strength and direction for their life. And this passage of scripture was a reminder for me and I shared with you today that what God is saying to you personally is to trust in him. To pause and, uh, and understand that this life that we're in where we acknowledge Christ to be Lord of our life, that he's real and he cares about us. And as we continue to embrace our sensitivity to God's presence in our lives. It is more than a theory, but it gets to a place of being a relationship. It's more than us going through a religious activity as assembling ourselves in a time of worship such as this. Yet the God we serve is so available to us moment by moment to direct us in our life. So it's vital for us to know what path it is that God wants us to take. What are the paths that God has, has laid out for us? What road should I be on? What direction should I be headed in? God says here that I will make your path straight. And if we're honest with ourselves, some of us may have to admit today that, 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 that my path is kind of shaky. I'm, I'm seemingly going in circles and I don't know where to go. You can say that it's rocky. And we experience this many times when we are sad. When our heads are drooped. And we feel a sense of depression. The word of the Lord to us today is to trust him. And it takes a certain discipline. Many of us have known that the importance of having daily devotions, the, the importance of coming to chapel and assembling ourselves together. And yet we need to hear with more depth today that God really does want to touch us individually, spirit to spirit. I've been amazed at my journey and again, that moment on campus in January, when I looked at that, I, it, it helped me to really examine at that moment and in, in this space of my own life, to what degree am I trusting in God with all of my heart? What does that mean? And I realized that, that I have been paying more attention to my emotions I, you know, it, it made me to think of this, and I've heard this, and many of you have heard this before, that, that, that our makeup is body, soul, and spirit. I've heard that all of my life. I have a body, I have a soul, I have a spirit. But I was reminded as I began to pray since that time that I've been really neglecting my spirit. Realizing, realizing that it is my spirit that's connected to God's spirit. I've heard the scripture before that God says that those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. I've heard that all of my life. But what does that really mean? When I was able to look out, out of myself and see a person with their 
head down and, and really so engulfed, I believe, in what they were doing that they never did see me, nor did they hear me. And that's what it's like many times. That, that, that we're so, so feeling heavy about where we are in our life that we have difficulty even observing those things that are around us. And so as I've heard God say to me, Carol, spend more time paying attention to your spirit because it is your spirit which is connected to my spirit and it is in that place where we commune. It is in that place, Carol, where we, we, we just enjoy the sweetness of each other. And you can tap into my glory, the essence of who I am. Now what that did was cause me to really realize that my soul, filled with my emotions, my affections, what I feel and what I think and all of that, I can't depend on that. That's all over the place at any given day. Depending on whatever is happening, whatever is thrown before me. My thought process and emotions can be everywhere. But God says one thing you can always count on, Carol, because you belong to me. That when you pause just enough to acknowledge my presence, acknowledge my presence, Carol, in the depth of your spirit, not just in your intellect where, yeah, you know there's a God. You can touch me. You can experience peace and you can experience joy that's not interrupted by anything. I allowed myself to just bask in that throughout that day. And again, from that point to this point, praying for this moment that I could stand before you, this awesome community, and say to all of us that we really do need to seek out the paths that God has for us. What is he saying? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Carol, trust in me with all your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. Now that was helpful right there because I can think of a whole lot of different kind of thoughts and have a variety of understanding in my own intellect, in my own experience. But he says, don't, don't you depend on that. But I want, what I want you to do, I need you and I want you to lean on me to acknowledge me, and I will direct your paths. That was comforting. It actually gave me peace because it made me to understand that I really don't know what roads to take at any given day. I don't know where I'm supposed to be, but I know who knows where I'm to be. And there are a few paths that God illuminated for me over this last month that he wanted me to recognize. And as I began to recognize this, I began to pray more deliberately for that student whose path crossed mine. One path that he gave me that he wants me to, to get on and do my best to stay on is a path of contemplation of who he is. For me, it, it goes deeper than just what my devotion has been where I'll pick up something and read scripture, the Bible, a devotional. But he says, I want you, Carol, to be on a path that even when you pick up that Bible, even when you pick up that devotional, be very intentional of knowing that I'm meeting you right there. I want you to experience me. I want you to know that you know that you know that I am your Lord, that I am your master. I want you to pause and take time to be quiet 
And we need to think about that because if we do a self-evaluation, we will have to admit that there's a lot of noise all around us. There's a lot of distractions all around us. Even as I'm speaking, some of you, your, your phones are on silent, but they're vibrating. We have all kinds of distractions. But God says, quiet yourself. Be on that path with me every day. And you'll know that I am directing your path. The time of quiet interaction with me is vital. Another path that he brought out to me, which was really important for me, maybe it will be for you. I want you to be on a path of forgiveness, to forgive. Well, I had to put some brakes on to really allow the God in me to help me to, to search out the nooks and crannies of my life and bring to the forefront of my remembrance who is it I need to forgive. It's easy for us to carry baggage and be weighed down. And he said, this is a path, Carol, that I need for you to be on. Because as you're on this path, you're experiencing your communion with me. Because I forgive, I need you to forgive. No matter what it is, students, for you, it can be family, friends, parents, each other, whatever it is. I need you to forgive as I forgive. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he shall direct your paths. We should have the desire to be on the path that God ordains for us to be on. He says to me, a path, Carol, that I need you on in such a time as this is the path of love. I need you, Carol, to love everyone, everyone. I like talking to God. I said, God, everyone. Let's see, when I said that, he, he knew, he knows deep down in me, those who I struggle to love. Because I have reasons not to love them. You ever have those conversations with God? God, you know that I have reasons not to love them. God says, I hear you, Carol, but really those ones right there, and he's easy to bring it up to your remembrance in terms of who, who are those you detest, cannot stand. Carol, as you acknowledge me in all your ways, I will direct your paths. It gives us the opportunity to make a decision whether I, as a disciple of Christ, desire to live my life the way I want to live it, or do I want to live my life according to the one who I've declared is Lord of my life. That I don't say it as a religious slogan, that Jesus is Lord of my life. As I confess today that Jesus is Lord of my life, my commitment is to submit to him. To say to him, Lord, I am yours. I know that 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 I'm yours. Let me address this. When I say that I know, that I know, that I know that Jesus is Lord of my life, I can see myself in scripture. I can see myself in Acts chapter 9. It's an interesting story. I remember the first time God just brought that passage of scripture to light for me. I was overwhelmed with it. In that passage of scripture, it talks about Saul of Tarsus. And what was so interesting about that, I, I saw myself like Saul 
of Tarsus who was taught religiously the things of God. That's how I was raised. Many of you were as well. You come from a religious background where you've been introduced to Jesus. Maybe you've chosen to follow him because that's how you were raised. Certainly for me, that's how I was raised. Saul of Tarsus had an intellectual knowledge of who God is. Respected that tremendously. Stood strong for it. For his knowledge. He is a believer in Jehovah God. But something happened to Saul of Tarsus. He was on the road to Damascus to persecute those who believed in Jesus. And while he was on his journey, the scripture tells how he was, he was knocked to the ground. There was a transformation which happened in the life of Saul of Tarsus where his awareness of who God is moved from his head to his spirit. A transformation where, where he knew God. Where did he know God? In the innermost parts of his being. I say the intuition of his spirit. It is that place today that God wants us as disciples of Jesus to be. To know that we know that we know who God is. And in establishing that place in our relationship with God, then this passage of scripture <clears throat> becomes powerful for us. As I know that I know that I know that I am a child of God and that God, his son, Jesus Christ, is Lord of my life. I can trust in the Lord with all of my heart. And I can get to the place where I'm no longer leaning on my own understanding and have a commitment that in all my ways, I, I desire... <laughs> I desire to acknowledge the Lord because I need him. I want him. I desire him to direct my paths. The Westmont student who symbolizes myself and you, all of us who are here today. I'm here to say that we can lift up our heads we can look up out of ourselves and out of our circumstances, all the hell and the torment that is unique to you. That which unsettles the deepest parts of you, that area where you don't have peace. You can hold up your head to God and say, oh God, show me the paths that I should take. It is a path that will lead you out of despair. It is a path that will put a smile on your face and a pep in your step. It is a path that you will know that you know, that you know that you know that God loves you. I speak against those of you who may be experiencing students' depression I speak to parents who are here and faculty and staff, those of us who are adults, for all of us, God desires peace in our lives. God desires for us to live every life going towards the light of life that he gives us in Jesus Christ. To experience that, to embrace that, to have peace, I tell you for the rest of your life, it's acknowledge the Lord with all of your heart. Don't trust your understanding. Acknowledge him 
with all your heart, never leaning on your own understanding. In all your ways, every one of them, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path. Father, I pray today for the student whose path crossed mine in January. I pray God for strength and deliverance for that student. And Father, as that student is a symbol for all of us today, Father, I pray that we will look up and begin to live this life you have given us, knowing, without a doubt, day by day, knowing the path that you have laid out for us and following it with all of our heart. God, I bless this community and I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that we will soar and make an impact in this world for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen.